Hey everybody, it's me again, Moody Boo, and I am back with another video on the series that I just started, The 10 Things That Suck, in my opinion. Um, and this one is The 10 Things That Suck About Having Big Boobs. And I'm not talking titties. I'm not talking breasticles. I'm talking boobs. I am talking double D's or bigger. And uh, um, I'm bigger than a double D, and we'll just leave it at that. Anyway, um, you know, I've, I've, all my life I have gotten, I've gotten a lot of flack from a lot of the girls because they think I'm so lucky to have big boobs. And mine aren't even the biggest in my family. I'm like mid-range in my family. And so um, I thought, you know, I kept thinking about it and I find all these things these reasons why it's kind of a hassle having them and I thought maybe we should put that out there because everybody thinks if you have big boobs life is easy and perfect and stuff and it's not it's can be quite the opposite it can complicate things in your life quite a bit so I've got a list I've got a lot more than 10 things <laughs> And even my husband helped put a couple of these on here. And let me tell you, my husband loves my chesticles very much. But he understands through 25 years of being with me that um, there are some flaws to having a big chest. There are some drawbacks. So, um, so he helped me with that. <laughs> so anyway, um, we'll just go ahead and get started. I usually always have to buy my bikini tops and my really good bras from Europe because for some reason they must have a lot more bigger boobed women over there because American brands a lot of times will go up to a double D that's it if you're past that forget about it um, but Europeans man they'll go way up there <laughs> but you'll pay for it I mean it'll cost some money for it and also I get a lot of times that uh, uh, um, it, you have lower intelligence and are easy because you have big boobs. So you're always the girl they want to take home for the night, but not for life. You're never the girl they want to take home to meet mom. And never ever in life will you be referred to as the girl next door, ever. You're always the bad influence. Um, okay, in my regard, that was all true. <laughs> But not anymore not since I met my husband. And another thing is, is that the natural, because when I was younger, um, I liked to hide them. I didn't like the attention coming from them. I didn't like the way I was treated when people knew I had abnormally large breasts. So I'd wear a lot of baggy clothing, clothing and I'd slump a lot, you know, to try to hide them. And of course, my mother was always, stick those shoulders back, the chest out. And I'm like, Mom makes me look like I'm trying to show them off or something. She's like, boo, that is their problem 100%. That ain't your problem. You take care of yourself and you display your confidence the way you should. You don't need to worry about everybody else. Of course, I did for many, many years. And until I met my husband, until I met Jimbo, and then all things changed. So, uh, and people assume that they're fake. You know, I've the one and only time I wore a strapless dress, I was dating this guy when I was a bartender and DJ over in North Carolina. And outside of Fort Bragg, and I was dating a GI, um, and he was like, hey, I've got a lot of money riding on the fact that, you know, a bunch of these guys think that you're, they're fake, you know. I'm like, well, how can they bet against you? You know, you know, and he's like, because they don't believe me, because they think I just want the money. And I'm like, oh, brother. And I said, I'm not going to put on that strapless dress. One of the bartenders had, was in on the bet, and she was like, you can wear my strapless dress, you know, and I'm like, eh, no. And then he said, I'll split it with you 50-50. Mm, yeah, okay. <laughs> and then, so the only time I ever wore a strapless dress was walking into the bar, the Sugar Shack, that night. And all the guys took one look at me that bet against us and was like, uh, here's your money. <laughs> there it is. And problem is, Tina never got her dress back because she tried to put it on. And I totally screwed up the boning. I mean, these things aren't made out of air. They're made out of fat and blood and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So it's, they're heavy. And so the boning, um, unless it's made out of, you know, titanium or, you know, something, steel or something, they're going to bend. And 
you once boning bends it doesn't bend back again it doesn't straighten out so I think I still have that damn dress somewhere because I never could give it back to her she couldn't wear it so she said keep it um, and if you wear loose clothing your profile the clothes go out to the end of your boob and then straight down so whether you have a belly or not it looks like you do and I wore baggy clothes forever. In fact, my husband, the first time after we'd been dating several weeks, you know, finally we did the deed. And I took my shirt off and I was just so nervous. I was like, oh my God, what if he hates him? What if he wants him smaller? What if he's terrified, you know? And first words out of his mouth with a big smile was Shazam. And I was like, I even got a t-shirt that says that. It's kind of a, a joke between us. But um, I could tell he was happy and that made me very happy. <laughs> so he talked me into wearing form fitting shirts because it shows I have a waist. I don't have a big gut, you know, um, I've got a 51 year old's body, you know, so it's certainly flawed and gravity is pulling it in places that I sure as shit wish it wouldn't. But, um, I'd love to be on like Mars someplace with light gravity because my shit would be up here again. <laughs> Instead of down, it gets lower and lower, and I'll be able to tuck it in my pants. My, at least that'll help my back aches because my center of gravity will change. But anyway, wearing form-fitting clothes, you know, people think you're trying to show them off, but you're not. You're trying to show off that you are composed of more than just your boobs. I have a butt. I have a waist. But you can't see any of that. You can't tell any of that when you're wearing these baggy, frumpy clothes. So... Um, I had to go to form-fitting clothes, but then everybody thinks, oh, she's trying too hard. Look at her, her fake boobs sticking out there, and I'm always like, mm. So, and button-up shirts are a thing of the past, unless you are in full armor, you know, so that, you know, bulletproof vest and everything, because I'm telling you, I have to wear stretchy shirts if I can even find a button-up shirt that will work, that will go slim on the waist and not be all boxy. Um, it has to be stretchy and because it's stretchy that also means that it acts like a slingshot when those buttons do go and I mean they go long hard and fast and you will take out eyes you could break a window I don't even know but so I'm very careful if I ever wear a button-up shirt which I rarely do I have like two in my huge wardrobe and I don't really wear them. <laughs> I put them on on occasion and then I always change my mind and put on something else. So, and also eye radar. Doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, male, female, transgender, it doesn't matter. Um, big boobs are eye radar. People's eyes go BAM and just stare at them. I've even had people direct conversations to them. And I'm always go down here and bring them back up. And it's like, you know, as last I knew, those don't talk. So it's best to kind of address this part of my body instead of this part. You know, because working in the bar back in the 70s and 80s, it was like, especially the 80s, tight pants all the way. There was even some polyester pants out there. I know, but there were. And <clears throat> guys would wear these really tight jeans, or really tight pants, and you could see the veins in their junk. It, they were so tight. And I never stared. It was a polite glance. Whoa, that guy has a manaconda. I better verify. Another polite little glance. Back up. That's the only two looks I get. One to check it out and the other one to verify I saw what I saw. And then the rest of it is processing it on the inside of my mind. Those mental flashes of pictures of those manacondas. And I didn't direct conversation to them, you know, because they say it's the little brain, but there's not actually any brains in there. So there's no point talking to it either. So there's no point talking to these. Talk up here. That'd be nice. Um, <clears throat> practicing good posture makes you look like you're trying to show off. <clears throat> but like I told you before, my mom always was on me about that. Now my husband is too, because I don't want to have kyphosis and have a big curved back, you know, when I'm older and slumped over and stuff so it's really important to to get everything where it needs to be and stay that way and it's also really good <clears throat> for your core training if you, good posture also means you suck in your gut which if you do that all the time which i try to <clears throat> it also helps strengthen your core having good posture so there is a plethora of reasons why you should have good posture 
And my only one for not was because I was worried what everybody else thought about my boobs. Um, <clears throat> I can't run unless it's to save my own ass or somebody else's. I don't run. Um, I would never run for, for pleasure. In fact, running and pleasure should never be in the same sentence as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's painful and you either have a uniboob because you have a really good bra and when you're running or you have a shitty bra and you go ba boing ba boing and it looks like porn and I ain't doing it. So I don't run. Also when snorkeling and I do this a lot every year when we go to Hawaii or in the you know fresh water salt water it doesn't matter there's so much buoyancy in these things that it's always trying to tip me on my back. <laughs> It's really hard to swim on my stomach because, especially in the ocean, because you're so buoyant anyway, if you have any kind of fat on you, then you are going to float like, you know, a leaf on the wind. And, <clears throat> um, and so I'll be swimming and pretty soon I can feel it forcing me up. And especially then when I dive underneath without a weight belt, forget about it. Between my ass and my boobs, it's like a string is tied to me and I go bloop like a bopper uh, somebody fishing or something you know it's insane it's very hard for me to swim in the ocean especially under the water or on my stomach snorkeling unless I have a weight belt um also <laughs> you have to be careful especially the older you get and you know your shit starts hanging lower and and spreading out more and stuff well when you're on top with your partner and my husband's the one that <laughs> When you're on top, you had to be careful when you lean forward, you could kill somebody. Give them a neck injury or suffocate them. I mean, it's like, <laughs> I'm always so paranoid about that. I'm like, honey, can you breathe? <laughs> Are you all right? Good thing I'm a nurse. I know CPR. So um, you got to watch that. You really do. You got to be careful not to, because your partner is going to be in boob heaven, you know, being having boobs all in here and here and plugging the ears and stuff. And so it's like they're going to be in sheer heaven. So they may not even say anything to you until they are comatose and brain damage sets in. So be careful. And I don't do low cut tops. And here's why. And you know, everybody's like, oh, decolletage is so pretty. Not, not mine. Mine looks like when I wear a low cut top, it looks like I have an ass that has nipples on its butt cheeks on my chest. I don't have this pretty cleavage, but I like a little separation, you know, just a touch. I don't have that. I have my shit squished together. It looks like ass cheeks and not even a firm ass cheek. It looks like a flabby ass cheek. And when you're cold, you got to worry about Marty Feldman eyes. Now, if nobody knows who Marty Feldman is, you're an idiot because you need to watch Young Frankenstein. Mel Brooks is a genius of epic proportion. He totally changed the face of comedy when he started doing Blazing Saddles, High Anxiety, History of the World Part One, um, Young Frankenstein. Those are all amazing movies. Marty Feldman was in, um, he played Igor in Young Frankenstein. And he was hilarious. And he has, he's one of these actors that has, I can't remember what it's called, but it's when, you know, almost both eyes are lazy and they, they both look two different directions, you know, to where you never know which one to address, which one you should look at or whatever. Well, that's Marty Feldman eyes. That's what we call Marty Feldman eyes. So when you're cold or it's cold out and every winter before I leave the house, I have to look in the mirror, see where the girls are pointing, um, the nips are pointing and make sure they're pointing where they're supposed to be. I don't want one because when you have big boobs, you put the bra on, it's just not like they're just, they're gonna, they just, they don't, you gotta, you know, in and pull up and waggle in and all that kind of stuff. And when that's all done, you may have a nipple here and a nipple up here. And I don't do that. So you gotta adjust them, get them, shake them, get everything to where they're pointing straight ahead again. <laughs> Yeah, you think I'm lying? Ask my husband. It's taken me five minutes before in order to get my nips right before I leave the, out of the house. Um, <clears throat> also, when you hit a uh, bump when you're riding your bike, um, the resulting ripples can set up a high-speed shimmy. I mean, and it 
it's like I'm having a seizure or something, you know. If you're you're going over too many bumps and stuff, it creates this, and pretty soon you've got this vacillation that is just about ready to break your neck and throw you off your bike. So I have to be careful with bumps when I'm on my bike. <laughs> ah, of course, when we're on a bumpy road, my husband's riding alongside me. He will come right up alongside and he'll almost crash because he'll just be watching my boobs as I'm going over the washboard or whatever. But he's insane and I love him for it. Um, also, no rappelling and no rock climbing. And they kind of go together and I've done both. And in Mexico we did a zip line and I had to rappel down from like this, this platform that was 100 feet up. And you have to be careful because <laughs> that rope naturally wants to go right here and it will split a bra if you're going too fast and give you rope berms in your cleavage. Now explain that one to the doctor. He would be first thinking, you're doing some kinky shit I don't even know about and you need to explain this to me. So no, I don't. And then when you're climbing up a rock wall, which I've also done on the Columbia, it was actually a sandstone wall. I couldn't see my feet where to put the next step and I could only make it about 20 feet up the wall and then I started to panic because I couldn't see my feet in order to see where to put my feet to go back down so I just had to push away from the wall and jump in the water and it was terrifying I will never ever do it again you need to be able to see your feet when you're rock climbing just saying and the last thing I'm going to talk about is dragging them through food now, of course, you're going to have a layer of, you know, a little bit of each meal up here. You know, that happens with everybody. Even my husband gets a little bit on his shirt on occasion. What only big boob women get is food on the underside of their chest. That's always fun. You got Kung Pao chicken under this one, and you got pineapple curry under this one. It is insane. I take off my shirt at the end of the day, and I'm like... I have no idea what kind of collage that is that I have painted on my shirt today, but how the hell did it get down here? And then my husband pointed out, he's like, honey, your boob's in the chicken again. Oh, God damn it. That's how it happens. You lean over to talk to somebody at a table, and bam, it's in there. There's a little spill on the table. You lean over, bam, it's under there. It's ridiculous. There are a few good things. For one thing, like I said before, they're a great buoyancy device. I have to say, they do me wonders as long as I'm on my back. <laughs> but it's hard to drown. Um, my husband loves them. They're part of who I am, but I just wish people, it's one of the reasons I grew my hair out long, is because I was hoping that neutralized the big boob girl thing, because as soon as you have big boobs, you will always be described as the girl with big boobs. You know that chick with the really big monster boobs, or that chick with the huge tits? You know, that's how you're described. So I've grown my hair out, and I wear it long and have for the last 15 years, because I'm hoping that sometimes, instead of that, they'll say, Hey, you know that tall chick with the long, dark hair. But usually there's an extra caveat. And the big boobs is in there. But at least the long, dark hair is in there. <laughs> so I'm not always identified by my boobs. Because I am composed of many body parts that make up the boo who I am. So it'd be nice to be kind of thought that way sometimes. But So, alright. Well, I think that's about it from the 10 things that suck. Well, it was a lot more than 10 things that suck about having big boobs. Anyway, I'm Moody Boo, and I hope to see you soon. All right.